into this next topic let me have we went an hour on this one man i'm fine with it because i get to chop up a whole lot of stuff y'all really love rich paul says lebron is all is off his idea of having to play with Bronny. paul told espn if he does he does but if he doesn't he doesn't i call oh. bullshit there's no deal made that it's guaranteed that if the lakers draft Bronny at 55 lebron will resign if that was the case i would force them to take him at 17. We don't need leverage. The Lakers can draft Bronny okay. and LeBron doesn't resign. Okay. That's bull- we know that's bullshit. LeBron okay. is also not going to Phoenix for a minimum deal. We can squash that now. I don't think he'd ever go for a minimum deal anywhere. If Bronny's name was Charles Jacobson he and he was my client, I would do the same thing. Identify teams that have real interest. I'm going to say one thing real quick and I'll let you go. If your client's name was Charles Jacobson, First of all, that wouldn't be your client because you wouldn't have – it's highly unlikely that it would uh, be a Jewish basketball player because I don't think there's about one in the NBA. Mm. Um, but he'd also be telling you to go back to school <laughs> to hone your game more because the fact that you would sit here and say that you would say the same thing, like that's just a joke. You would be telling that guy if he was averaging 5.8 points per game and shooting 27% from three, you would be telling Charles Jacobson – to go, go back, back to, to go back to school. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He wouldn't be telling Charles Jacobson that. He wouldn't be. He wouldn't be representing Charles Jacobson. <laughs> That's the first point. If if Charles Jacobson after five points eight that uh, USC, you know, he wouldn't be representing him. He don't even know the kid's name, you know. So that right there is just crazy in itself. Like he would not be representing that guy. So you wouldn't have to worry about that. So um, but. I don't know. Rich Paul is pulling um, Rich Paul moves. He has earned it now. He's putting himself as a echelon of uh, of uh, agents, and, and he's known around the league. And he kind of have a power cord that he can pull when he wants to. So if he says that that he could get Bronny drafted with the seventeenth pick if he wanted to to keep LeBron, who are we to say? That, who are we not to believe? He says that the uh, the Mavs GM is like. Bronny's uncle, so that's another spot Bronny could go to. Um, so at the end of the day, Bronny will go somewhere, but he's trying to pull these cords for a player who's, you know, should be a second round, maybe to no round draft pick that he needs a guaranteed deal for. Um, she's really pulling that LeBron cord. I mean, he got in there, he got in there as an agent because of LeBron, but it looked like he's taking the next step to be that guy to. To pull strings when he want to and how he want to. That's why we say um, when people say things is politics, it really is politics, man. Um, I know a lot of football players are like, man, I was one of the best players in that camp and, and when I went to a camp, and, and they end up cutting me, man. It was politics, and they damn right for the most part. There are some players who are god awful. I don't care what they talking about. You got cut because you just suck. Some players, man. This other player is getting already getting guaranteed money. Um, this player knows this knows the G knows the GM. His agent knows the GM, so they're in. You know, they they're intertwined like that. So sometimes it is politics, and that's how it works, man. I'm not mad at it anymore because it is what it is. It probably screwed me out of getting another shot in the NFL, but hey, it is what it is, man. That's just how it works sometimes. And people in power, they use their power. It ain't for all for good. It's not all for evil. They use it, man, and that's just what it is, man. Suck it up, man. Bronny might Bronny gonna get drafted. We're gonna live with it. Bronny's getting drafted, Rudy. Whether you like it or not, he's getting drafted. Are you clapping your hands every time you say a word? No, that's probably my thighs. Clap some thighs. Clap some thighs. <laughs> it's very, very loud. Okay. Um, I'm stop clapping my thighs. I call bullshit. I call bullshit on all of it. It, it, it. This is what agents are supposed to do. Yeah, I can play. This, this is their. This is their job. They they hype their they hype their client up even though it's a lie. So um, I'm going to say he's going to be in the first round because that because that's such a bold that's such a ridiculous lie that every, no one on earth would believe it. Why? Um, I can say the team why? Team. Because he's not good enough. He's not even remote good enough. The team it, from twenty three and thirty was like oh he's not, a- no fucking chance no okay. fucking chance there's no. I love that they just tell bullshit lies all the time just, and, and they tell bullshit lies that are believable. <laughs> Lies, lies by agents that are not believable are not worth telling. 
if you have a lie, it needs to be remotely believable for the public to buy it. It, it, it. So you can sit here and say, well, why not say, oh, he's a first round pick? No, he's not, because we've all got eyes. And none of us are that fucking dumb. So you can't, mm-hmm. you can't put a freaking whoop, a bag over our head and say, oh, yeah, Ronnie's a great, great player. No, he's not. He's a, he's a mediocre college player. He's a mediocre to below mediocre college, below average player as a freshman. Could he become a better player yeah. in college? Absolutely. Much better? Not really. But he could become a better player. That said, he's not a pro. And the fact that they, they don't work out for anybody. Yeah, it, that's, it, that's the crazy that, part. That's ridiculous. And to me, that's to me, if I'm a pro, if I'm a guy who was playing college ball, I'd be so bothered by that. And maybe maybe it's because this is my career you're fucking with. Okay. Because you're fucking with these guys' careers and these opportunities that are, are like I can't stand every second that the Nasus Antetokounmpo is in the NBA because of Giannis. It is it is such a problem in, in my opinion that this guy who is nothing more than a glorified cheerleader. Mm-hmm. And has no skill. What he would he couldn't even play in Europe. Like he could barely play in Europe right now. And he's making all it look good for him. He's making this money. He now has a podcast or finalysis, whatever the hell that crap is. Like who why, why would anyone watch that? Although I've seen a couple of funny clips off of it. But he blew his Achilles on vacation. He's oh. out for next season. So he can, all he can do is, you know, clap and, and be a cheerleader again. And collect his money. But it's like the fact that he's in the league is no, crazy. No, While there are so many guys that are so much better than him, that are not getting. But it's not, and and to me, like this is the one. This isn't like any other. This isn't like any other industry. I'm about to say any other job sports, or business or sports. Sports are not like any other job industry, because. You can be – because the jobs in the, in, the, in the NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, all these professional sports, they're limited. They're very limited. You think Shane McMahon had to earn his job at the WWE with Vince McMahon when Vince McMahon was the CEO? No. No. But that's what, but what you, it is. But, that, but, that, but, but he owned the league. He owned the, he owned the company. Did that prevent someone else from getting a job? No. So why is it the only – it's the only stop in sports. Why I can't? Why? Because because they're not, because there's not preventing someone from becoming employed in sports. The jobs are so limited and the times are so truncated for your career. Like you're gonna sit here and tell me as a former pro athlete that if you knew that Tom Brady's son, who's five foot three and 132 pounds. If they I, don't, set, I don't know how tall he is they, or how big he is. They're setting a precedent. That's a bad but, like, like if, if Tom Brady's son, who was a, a, a six foot, 165 pound wide receiver, who ran a 4 9 in the 40, but let's say, I'm sorry, cornerback, 4 9 in the 40, playing at cornerback, and got a job over you, that wouldn't drive you out of your fucking mind that's because right, only because of, but, that, but that's the thing. And then this is, this again, the, this is not like comparing dad who owns a financial firm hiring his son or his daughter. Why? Because the it's his. He owns it. He yeah. owns it. LeBron James does not own any franchise <laughs> or anything in the NBA, well, even if he thinks he does. He does not own it. All right. Secondly, basically, in, in order to make money, in order, now they make, when he retires, they'll still make money. Not as much. You know, as you would make with him. B- bullshit. Bullshit. And I'll tell you right now, why? Because the ratings in the NBA are worse today than they were 25 years ago. I'm saying for that team that LeBron is on, they won't make as much the money. Lakers? The Lakers? The Lakers? The Lakers are sold out. You know, the, you know, the Lakers are sold out to eternity, bro. You know, you don't, think they, you don't think they make more money and charge more no, when they get LeBron? No, 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 no. Because they don't charge more. They don't charge less today than they charged 10 years ago with the Heat for, for retail season tickets. Yeah, you got Jimmy Butler. He's just as good as LeBron. There was a there was a there was a gap, or and Jimmy Butler is not LeBron. <laughs> like, come on, I can still sell my Lakers tickets for a thousand dollars. Oh my god! Because LeBron is a LeBron is a second a th- a third party re- a third second party vendor. You know, scalping tickets coup for most people. Yes, he still remains that because people know he's limited. If Michael Jordan came back to play today at sixty three, the tickets would cost ten thousand dollars in the upper deck. 
and he couldn't walk. I mean, like we, the Florida Panthers to sit in the upper deck yesterday versus the the, the Edmonton Oilers because we thought we were going to win and thought we were going to be able to hold host the cup at home. The upper deck tickets were over a thousand dollars. We lost, so now we got to go do it in Edmonton. I don't want to oh. come back for games. I don't want to come back for game seven. Let me win in Edmonton. I'm happy to watch it on television uh, and, and break their fucking hearts up there. But it, it, if you're if you have a financial firm. What do you need to do in order to be uh, to, to work in that in that field? You gotta get licensed. Mm-hmm. You gotta go to school. You or, or you have to take you know yeah. SEC whatever te- the series sixty six or the two one five or whatever the test required to sell stocks and insurance or whatever it is. Series six, series six, not series sixty. <laughs> series six. So you, you're you have to take these classes. LeBron, Brian James did he even go to class? It, his class. Like, in terms of that, his class is basketball. His class is basketball. You know, he's not good enough. He didn't pass the tests. Extra credit. He did, not, he, he did not pass the tests. Extra credit. He did not pass the tests to make him worthy of that job. Because dad can give this son the job, but if son doesn't pass the test, the job ain't shit. Because he, he can't actually do the work. Extension. Colin Coward compared it to a, a lawyer, a, a father giving his son a job as a lawyer. Yeah, you know he went to law school. You know he had to pass the bar <laughs> to become a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. It's not the same thing. If I tell my kid and I'm a doctor, hey son, I'm hiring you to be my do- a doctor, but you're not law. You're in law school. You're gonna, gonna to pass your boards. This isn't the same. This isn't remotely the same thing. This guy did not go, but for a semester of college, it was two a semester and a half. He didn't go for. He didn't go to school in the spring. Stop. No. He went for a semester of college. Well, he, and- he, he probably went in the spring because he, he wasn't for sure coming out yet. Maybe he went this spring. Maybe. Maybe. I, I, I'm sure he was doing all his classes. Um, but nonetheless, you're comparing an apple to an orange. These professional leagues, you have a small window. And I and there are guys that are getting fucked over like, so, like a, one spot. One spot. Is being used by a guy who can't play basketball, the Nasa Santetokounmpo, and there's probably a few others that are just like him, but none of them are are are, are brothers of the best player on the planet. I mean, John Tay Porter probably, but he didn't play in the same team, and now he got himself kicked out because he was gambling. Yeah. But yeah, you know, and I don't believe Rich Paul for a second. I don't believe him for a second because there's no way in the world you're going to sit here and tell me that Bronny gets even. Picked up as a free agent by the we, Lakers. We get to see and, in a week. And, and LeBron does not resign. We get to see in a week, Rudy. One week. We get to find yeah. out. Well, will they have a coach yet? Will, will LeBron's assistant have been hired yet? Um, <laughs> because uh, AJ, Reddick, AJ Reddick's been the one interviewed, and I don't know who else is under consideration. They, 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 they said they wanted to hire someone. They said and, they wanted to hire Someone before the before the draft. I heard that Monty Williams might be getting uh, some play, some consideration. But he just, got fired, he just got fired for being one of the worst coaches in the league for the Detroit Pistons. He was and six, the Detroit and six, Pistons. Six, six, sixty-five million dollars. Can you imagine getting fired? Can you imagine hey, them, them not liking you so much? They'll take. They'll eat sixty-five <laughs> million. I'm not doing anything. I'm not <laughs> You're telling me to not do anything. I'm not stressing about anything anymore. Unless it's just a little bit again. Okay. You know, Monty Williams, and this is so off topic, but Monty Williams gets fired. You realize that Monty Monty Williams has a sixty-five million dollars to sit his ass home oh. over the next five, six years. Yeah, but, 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 but more, but worse, but worse. I think maybe God. Okay, we're gonna go with religion now. I think God was looking out for Monty Williams because he's been given a lot of bad luck. It, on, a, going, on, a per, on a personal level, yeah, like a, lot of tragedy, a lot of tragic shit. Yeah. His first wife died in a car accident. His second wife was diagnosed with breast cancer last year. Like this guy. Still don't want it. God damn, man. You get to go home. Oh, stay, stay, stay the fuck home and be with your fucking family, man. You might, you might use basketball to get away from it, man. Some people need it. Your wife has breast cancer. Stay home. He was supposed to stay home last year, but he, but the Detroit Pistons offered him so much damn money. He's like, I don't know about this. This is a lot of damn money to suck. He's, he's, 
these idiots are giving me six. You're giving me seventy-eight million. <laughs> I mean, man, these so idiots I, are I, giving I me know. seventy-eight billion for six I, years, I, I or five years, know. or whatever it was. Whatever it was, but it was a lot. Man. It was like twelve but, billion. But but I call bullshit on the on this Rich Paul thing. Why? Because I've seen agents do this song and dance before. Okay. Like I said to you earlier, Drew Rosenhaus was a, is an expert at it. He 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 made the, the he he convinced the Buffalo Bills that Willis McGay he would be healthy when the season started after his knee exploded versus Ohio State in the national championship game. And anyone with eyes saw which way McGahee's knee went. It did exploded that, the wrong direction. Did that pay off? It paid off though. Did it pay off? I mean, marginally. They were never that good. Willis um, was good. He was good with those. Willis was good for a few years. Um, he was. He's not a, a Hall of Famer or nothing like that, which I think in large no, part. But he was that, that, that injury in, in that game was was just, was, was catastrophic. Um, let me see what he averaged. It was two thousand two. Um, he had eighteen hundred yards or so in in that season uh, yeah. for the Hurricanes, and and was was dynamic. Mm-hmm. And then he never had he never had the same speed after that um but he missed the full season pretty much 1100 you know? 1100 yards was ricky at 13 touchdowns 1128 12 his next year oh, yeah, 90, about five years about 990 five years. then 1207 then yeah, he came back on one million per year in denver <clears> for yeah, so he, had what, he had like five six five or six good seasons yeah um but his career was never the same but drew rosenhaus this is before social media all these things was able to basically hide that he could barely walk, you know? Um, and there was no way in hell he'd be healthy, but he convinced the bills to pick this man in the first round. Now, mind you, McGahee would have been a top five pick had he not gotten hurt. So um, I've seen these agents pull this shit out their ass so many freaking times that I don't trust nothing. They say they're doing their jobs. They're yeah. supposed to do them. And I'm not going to be mad at them, but this is bullshit. <laughs> like this is just a lie. This is like a a, a hard to stomach buy. Thank you for watching. Come on now the podcast, please be sure to subscribe, like comment and ring that bell. So you get up to the minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at come on now podcast and X and TikTok at come on now pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel. Thank you.